who want it. Thank you very much. Back to sharing my screen. Right, first slide is a very general view of uh, Starlink, what we all understand. You'll notice that there are quite a few colored dots there. Uh, the plan is to put up 42,000 satellites. Uh, pretty ambitious. And that will certainly cover everything. But it's not quite as straightforward as that. For example, um, the, there are so many to go up at one time, they're going up at 60 at a time. Now it's 50 at a time because other users want to piggyback on the what is called the American broomstick. I'll explain that term, term for you later on. You may know already. Starlink will sit about 340 miles up. That word average is because, in fact, it doesn't have one plane around the Earth. There are actually three. So in effect, there are three networks going up. The first two are in near-Earth orbit, 210, 340. I've got my pointer on them. And the third is at 700 miles out, the other side of this band of debris, which is around the Earth. Um, the problem with being in near-Earth orbit is that, in fact, there is a, some atmosphere at that altitude. It's very thin, but quite enough to slow down any satellite that is in that, those two bandwidths. So something must be done in order to help that. And what is done is using ion thrusters to get the satellites in orbit. It takes a couple of months for any of the ones, of the satellites that go up to get into position. The iron thruster has a very low um, push to it, but it's enough to get it in time. And they are very important because Elon Musk um, has said very firmly that they will be used to get out of the way of any major debris or any other important satellites. Let's look a bit closer. Um, you'll see at the top there that, in fact, a new version is going up very soon. These three, these four dots are the antennae, but there is a difference. Um, and the difference is uh, that there will be, um, uh, as well as the iron thrusters, sun shades because, of course, um, people have been complaining about them being too bright. Astronomers are, are up in arms and have uh, got together and dashed off a paper complaining about the brightness of these objects. So Elon Musk and SpaceX are doing what they can in order to make them not quite so reflective. The new things about the new version is that they are using laser links to connect uh, to each other in their, um, in their plane of orbit. Uh, previously, it was shortwave radio in order to join them. And these are a, a very new and very important improvement. And they will be connected by laser links, not simply in their plane of orbit, but between the different, the three different planes. The problem has been, of course, this stuff, because uh, SpaceX is getting them up in groups of five, 50 or 60 at a time. But the responsibility uh, lies with the FAA, the Federal Aviation Authority, and they are actually behind hand. They have not yet given permission for the 30,000 that Musk has applied for. Um, and 
In fact, the original 12,000 are still going up. And you'll probably have uh, known about this, the Starlink receiver stations. There is a new receiver station, an oblong object, so the old round ones are being shipped off to the Ukraine, and they have been very effective uh, due to the fact that the Russian forces uh, clearly had problems with supply. They did, weren't supplied with uh, good communication facilities because they thought they could just walk in and those would not be necessary. And they've uh, got a bit of a bloody nose as a result of that. Ukraine have done very well by Starlink. I, I should uh, mention that, in fact, there is another satellite group going up, and that's 648, part owned by the British government. It's the OneWeb constellation. They are much further out, about 1,000 kilometers out, or is it miles? Somebody will correct me later on, I hope. But they were always going up on soils. And now Soyuz is not available for obvious reasons. And Elon Musk and SpaceX very generously are making a little bit of money by getting up their, uh, their competitors at OneWeb. I don't think OneWeb will be much of a competitor, but perhaps other people can correct me there. Uh, this gives rise to the broomstick uh, reference earlier. Uh, when asked what they could do in order to get their satellites up, um, the head of the Russian Space Agency said, uh, I don't give a damn. They can go up on their American broomstick if they like. Um, I guess a reference to uh, um, some other film somewhere. That's about it. I'm going to st stop screen sharing and request comments and questions. If you'd like to put a question, put your hand up. I prefer a real hand, but there are yellow mechanical hands that can be used if you wish. Reed already has a comment. <laughs> well, I've got a question. <clears throat> this is one web. What is the purpose of that one? Is it the same to provide internet access? Uh, yes, that's correct, but it's a good deal further out than the SpaceX Starlink um, three networks. I'm not quite sure. Perhaps money is to be made in, in you know, with two webs. And has this got anything to do with those satellites that, um, what was his name again? The, the bloke that was in the government, uh, what's his name again? The, the uh, advisor of uh, Boris Johnson, because he organized some sort of contract with a with a space um, and, and an organization that was going to launch satellites. Yeah. Although I saw that was to give an alternative for yeah, the, uh, the original one web company. In fact, went broke, and the the government decided to bail them out by buying 48% of their shares. And that's the reason that we are involved in that. I don't know if it's competition. Perhaps they will all merge together. Can there, was, there was supposed to be for satellite for, for navigation purposes, wasn't it? That's right. So I don't know. Ah. Comments, um, questions? I think I know what Rain is talking about. Yes, we we had a sort of alternative GPS, didn't we? Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened to that. I mean, later the story was that those satellites that they were planning to to launch were on at, not at the correct height to function as GPS, uh, but the government hadn't quite sussed that. That's the okay. story that was going around, but, but I don't it, know what happened. It was a joint venture with. Uh, EU countries, wasn't it? So Brexit put a spanner in the works, I think. Well, it, no, it, it, it was our alternative, the UK alternative to what the EU was going to do. Yeah. I forgot what it's called, even. Yeah, I forgot. Um, me too. So who the SpaceX project, um, Tom, 
who who is it for? It, can anybody subscribe? Is it for anybody that's got the money? Uh, pretty pricey to get one of the dishes which you need in order to uh, to get onto Starlink. At the moment, something like six hundred and forty dollars a month, I believe, is the figure I have in mind, which is oh. too expensive. It's obviously for companies rather. Yes, Barry. Well, that, that was the question I was going to ask. What is this um, this network going to do that that can't be done at the moment? Uh, first of all, it's very much faster because the latency. Uh, which is the amount of time it takes for a signal to get from Earth up to the satellite and back again, is about 20 milliseconds. Currently, you're jolly lucky if you can get anything back for, from for, uh, for about 300 milliseconds. So it's much, much faster. And, of course, it has a very nifty throughput. These are, these, these are very good um, satellites. Uh, another question? No hands? Well, and, and they are very, it is very suitable if you're in a rural area where you haven't got good internet access or in countries like Africa or God knows where, if you somehow can afford the money, of course. Well, of course, if you've got 42,000 satellites, you're going to cover pretty nearly everything except the poles. Well, Here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity for you, Breen, because uh, as I understand it, uh, you've got a farmer who disrupts your internet service on a uh, an inconvenient basis. Yeah, uh, because oh. you live quite rurally, and uh, it's an opportunity for your community to club together, isn't it? And um, and fund. Uh, a monthly subscription, and then you could have a ground station that then distributes uh, the the internet to all the villagers. Yes, yes, I'll I'll ask the farmer if he's willing to pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the new oblong receivers uh, are much cheaper, I think, than the original receivers, the round dishes. So there's an opportunity there. Comments, questions? Do you think this idea, Tom, of Musk's has got a... Um, is it going to stay there or is it just a transient project? No, I, I don't think it's transient at all. I think he's doing what he did with Star, uh, Starship and all of those, is look at the final thing that he wants. He's not interested in interim solutions. He's decided how do we really solve the problem of communications? And the answer is you put up 42,000 satellites. Mm. Did you catch the news today that he's um, he's bought uh, a big slice of Twitter? Yes. I, think, I, I forget how much it is, but it does align with his communications ambitions, really, doesn't it? I, I don't know. I'm not on Twitter. I'm... Twitter free. And so am I. So am I. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a twit. <laughs> I always knew that. <laughs> Comments. <laughs> Questions. Can anyone solve the problems that I put earlier that I, I wasn't sure of? Um, for example, why uh, is there another band of satellites right out at 700 miles. What's, what's so important? Why have three bands? I have actually looked for an answer to that and I haven't been able to find it. Lots and lots of uh, good information about how they get into orbit and stuff like that, but not why. It's all, it must be to do with the orbital period, is it? Possibly, but um, it's a very complicated uh, system um, because, of course, the Earth is precessing all the time. Yeah. Are they precessing around the Earth? I can't remember which. Um, but it is, it is not a very simple process. Mile. It's not, I hate to say it, but it is not simply money, is it? Do we have people who are have sufficient money to be able to 
offer alternatives to system A, and therefore they are providing all, you know, there are all sorts of things going up. Compare it with the way the railways were developed in UK back um, 200 years ago in the 18, what, 1820s, well, 1830s, 1840s. There were innumerable small lines set up by people, many of which went bust shortly afterwards. Are we seeing an analogous situation? Personally, I would say not. I think he's going for the big one and it will make money because he has a knack for going for the big ones and making money at the same time. Let's see, he has not solved a lot of the problems uh, with Starship, for example. And I'm, very, I'm looking very carefully at that. You may remember from a previous talk, the Starship enters the Earth belly first and has ablative shielding and uh, in order to dissipate the heat. But it must turn to land on its bottom. And that is going to be quite a difficult trick because it's landing using rocket motors. Therefore, it must retain enough fuel to drive those motors. And landing something on its bottom with fuel still in it, sloshing around in the tanks, is a very, very dodgy uh, way to, to go about it. it. It has been done with um, SN15, if you remember, which did land correctly. But there were four failures before that. So uh, I think there are a lot of problems to be solved. But he's daring enough and clever enough to solve them. I mean, he's already done it with the uh, rocket boosters that they uh, land again yeah. standing up, don't they? Yeah. But those are, um, they're something, not, not number nines. I've forgotten the word now. Old age strikes again. Yes, Barry. I've got a question. I was going to question a comment, really. Um, while, while Elon Musk is doing all this, um, closely collaborating with the US government. What are China doing? Because I'm not sure that they would want to have all of their communications routed through networks that are very closely linked to the American government. Well, my quick answer to that is I don't know. Um, but you're quite right. They can hardly be happy about it. But um, although when we see a picture of the Earth with all of those lines around it, there is actually quite a lot of space up there. Remember, the Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, so perhaps they will occupy the same bandwidth, I don't know. Yes, Mary? Hello, it's me with one of my quirky questions here. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar with the term contrative waves, where you have a sort of um, early adopters, and then you have the other people who ride on the back of that, and then you get the trailers. And I'm just wondering um, whether the early adopters in these technologies will eventually run out of steam and be overtaken by other contenders. So if that were the case, who are the next contenders? Well, that's the same as um... Pioneers get arrow in the back and uh, other people come along afterwards, but I don't think that is the case. There's too much hardware involved. It, uh, and although they do have a tendency to decay and have to be pushed up with their iron thrusters, um, you know, there's so many of them, I can't see them as just simply... Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about the commercial side of it, really. Right. So, I mean, whoever is in the lead now, can they stay in the lead? Having having solved the problems and forged their way forward, will they start to run out of money or steam or ideas? And then the next ones will come along. And who is that likely to be? Will it be the Chinese taking over this prime position? Possibly. That's 
That's my uh, first question. My second question is a bit more trivial, really, but all this stuff that gets put up there, does anybody actually bring it down willingly? I mean, do they go up and get it, catch it and bring it back down? Not so far. When he gave um, receivers to the Ukraine, one of the comments that Elon Musk made was, of course, we're looking, they can shoot down a few satellites. They're very obvious and very easy to find. But of course, that has not happened uh, because, well, that would have very dire consequences if they started playing that game. And can, in you, fact, can, you, can you kidnap people's satellites? I mean, how, how difficult or how easy would it be to nick other people's satellites up there? Well, there's already plans to go up with a, a large net and get rid of some of the debris that's up there. There's much more debris up there than there is Starlink satellites. Much more. <clears throat> but in, in principle, you should be able to get a virus on the software of a satellite, shouldn't you? Yes. And in that case, it, that's like kidnapping the, the satellite. <laughs> Sort of a coronavirus for satellites. Yeah, I wasn't quite thinking of coronavirus, but <laughs> the other issue, of course, is you've yes. got to launch these things, haven't you? Yeah. Now, are we still using, or is it is is the the launch site in Kazakhstan still being used, or has that been derailed by the war in? Uh, no, as far as I know, it's still in use. I have not seen anything that said that, that Kazakhstan has pulled out. I don't think they're in a position to do that. Steve had his hand up. Um, yes, yeah, several things. Um, we are building uh, a space launch site on Orkney, aren't we, at the moment? Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be one in Cornwall somewhere. Huge. Huge, is it? Yeah. Is that cool or Devon? Near New Quay. That's near you, Barry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think it's going to be near New Quay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well that's as far south as they could get, unless they put them on the Silly Islands. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing I was going to say was um, very near us, down in Guildford, there's a company called Surrey Satellite. Uh, oh. Um, they are involved in micro satellites, as you probably know, and yeah. they have done some experiments on um, something similar to what you described, Tom, but instead of like a trawler net, it's a harpoon gun. And they send up this vehicle, this small satellite with some kind of sophisticated harpoon and shoot it at the debris they want to collect and just reel it in. And that's how, and then of course they they then uh, change their orbital parameters to uh, bring it down in a big burn. So well, you surprised me. I would have thought sending up advanced mouse traps might be just as effective. <laughs> I like the idea of a net personally, but mere yeah. idea of um, capture, of course, reminds me very much of. Um, you don't need the to have, moving. All you do need to do is to slow them so that gravity will, gro will grab them and they will burn out. Yeah. And that's all that's ne needed. You don't have to bring them back to Earth. So what's going to happen with the ISS now then, Tom? Um, Are they going to bring it down early? No, they just, they've said that they will bring it down much later than usual. But my last, uh, that I, I read somewhere, is that the Russians will effectively take it back. We've been using soil, or the Americans have been using soils to get their um, astronauts up for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very pleased that they're now being able to use SpaceX. But I don't think that the ISS will be welcoming to Americans for very much longer. The original was Russian. And we built, the Americans built on the Russian, um, sadly or something or other it was, I think. It'll end up as a ghost ship, won't it? Yeah. Costs a lot of money to keep it going, of course. Mm. It has achieved an awful lot. 
Mm. Comments and questions? I've got a comment. Yes, Dave. Um, Elon Musk has actually put forward that he is actually going to use some of his uh, SpaceX stuff to actually boost the height of the station. And actually, if you look at the station, there's actually not very much of it that actually belongs to Russia. There's only re really the first two bits and a few odds and ends. It's mostly um, other people's, mostly American stuff. Mm. Um, so, I mean, if they took their bits off, Elon Musk could just attach and give them a boost instead. Yeah. In fact, the ISS is sufficiently low that they have to keep uh, boosting yes. it and raising it because it's just a few molecules of air is enough to slow it down because it's so large. So that's the way it would go. They would just eject the Japanese, the American, the Canadian, um, the Canada arm, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they would burn out. A lot of it is actually connected together. That's actually connected to non-Russian parts. So it, it, it would be far easier to actually just detach their to their bits because they're mostly stuck onto uh, uh, Zvezda and um, uh, Zarya, which were the first two bits. And then there's the they stuck up all those bits on, like the uh, space the um, research station parts onto universal nodes. So they could be easily detached. If you look at the space station itself, it's mostly um, um, photovoltaic cells. It's great big yes. cells. Um, I, have a, I have a story from way back when I first got interested in this. When the Americans and the Russians decided that they would attempt to join their satellites, this is going back 15, 20 years, the problem was uh, that they both used the probe going into the socket. And when it was suggested that the Russians would be the probe and the Americans would be the socket, the Americans said, no, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> but it ended up with a very clever stuff, uh, building something that goes like that. Yeah. So they, yeah. And that's why that connection. But they have actually reverted to probe and socket since then. It's the old problem of the male and female union, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, in a patriarchy, somebody's got to be the winner and somebody's got to be the loser. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of a uh, hermaphrodite uh, um, coupling like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a hand clasp, wasn't it? <laughs> That's right. Interesting. Any more questions? I'm going to stop recording uh, if we are still recording. Yes, we are. Thank you very much.